Letter to Ko no Ama Gozen. I have received 300 mon of coins from the wife of Abutsu Bo. Since both of you are of the same mind, have someone read this letter to you and listen to it together. I have also received the unlined summer robe you sent to me here in the recesses of this mountain in Hakiri village, Kai province, all the way from the province of Sado where you live. The Hasi chapter in the fourth volume of the Lotus Sutra states, If there is one who, in his quest for the Buddha way, shall throughout one kalpa join his palms and in my presence praise me with countless verses, because of this praise of the Buddha he will gain a measurable benefit. But one who praises the bearers of this sutra will have blessings surpassing even that. This means that the benefit of making offerings to a votary of the Lotus Sutra in the evil age of the latter day of the law surpasses that of serving in all sincerity as noble a Buddha as Shakyamuni with one's body, mouth and mind for an entire medium kalpa. Although this may seem unbelievable, you should not doubt it, because such are the Buddha's golden words. The great teacher Miao Lo further clarifies this passage from the sutra by saying, If there is one who troubles, a preacher of the Dharma, then his head will be split into seven pieces, if there is one who makes offerings, to the preacher, his good fortune will surpass that of the ten honorable titles. In other words, the benefit of making offerings to a votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law exceeds that of making offerings to a Buddha endowed with the ten honorable titles. On the other hand, one who persecutes a votary of the Lotus Sutra in the impure age will have his head broken into seven pieces. I, Nichiren, am the most extraordinary person in Japan. The reason I say so is this. The seven reigns of heavenly gods I will set aside, and the five reigns of earthly gods are beyond my knowledge, but throughout the ninety reigns from the time of the first human emperor Jima until the present, or during the more than seven hundred years since the reign of Emperor Kimei, when Buddhism was introduced to this country, no one has ever been so universally hated as Nichiren on account of either secular or Buddhist matters. Mononobe no Moriya burnt down temples and pagodas, and Kiyomori Nudo had Todai-ji and Kofuku-ji temples destroyed, but the people of their clans did not harbor hatred toward them. Masakado and Sadato rebelled against the imperial court, and the great teacher Dengyo incurred antagonism from the priests of the seven major temples of Nara, but these men were not hated by priests, nuns, laymen and laywomen throughout the whole of Japan. In my case, however, parents, brothers, teachers and fellow priests, every single person from the ruler on down to the common people, treat me as if I were their parents' enemy, and show me more hostility than if I were a rebel or a robber. Thus, at times I have been vilified by several hundred people, and at other times, besieged by several thousands, I have been attacked with swords and staves. I have been driven from my residence and banished from my province. Finally I twice incurred the regent's displeasure, being exiled once to Izu province and again to Sado Island. When I was banished to Sado in the Northern Sea, I had neither provisions to sustain me nor even clothes as coarse as those made of wisteria vines to cover my body. The people there, both priests and laity, hated me even more than did the men and women of Sagami province. Abandoned in the wilderness and exposed to the snow, I sustained my life by eating grass. I felt as though I were personally experiencing the sufferings of Su Wu, who survived by eating snow while living in captivity in the land of the northern barbarians for 19 years, or of Li Ling, who was imprisoned in a rocky cave on the shore of the northern sea for six years. I underwent this ordeal not because of any fault of my own but solely because of my desire to save all the people of Japan. However, while I was in exile there, you and your husband Ko Nudo, avoiding the eyes of others, brought me food by night. You were ready to give your lives for my sake without fearing punishment from the provincial officials. Therefore, although life in Sado was harsh, I was loath to leave, feeling as if my heart were being left behind, and I seemed to be pulled back with each step I took. I wonder what karmic bonds we formed in the past. Just when I was thinking how mysterious it was, you sent your most precious husband as your messenger to this distant place. I thought it must be a dream or an illusion. Even though I cannot see you, I am convinced that your heart remains here with me. Whenever you yearn for me, Nichiren, look toward the sun which rises in the morning and the moon which appears in the evening. I will invariably be reflected in the sun and the moon. In the next life, let us meet in the pure land of Eagle Peak. 
Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, Nichiren the 16th day of the 6th month. Background. Nichiren Daishonin wrote this letter at Mount Minobu on June 16, 1275, to a woman named Ko no Ama who lived in the seat of the provincial government of Sato Island. Ko means provincial office. While the Daishonin was in exile on Sato, Ko no Ama converted to his teachings. She and her husband Ko Nyudo, NYUDO meaning lay priest, made him offerings and helped protect him. After the Daishonin was pardoned and left Sato, Ko Nyudo, like a Butsu Bo, made the long journey to Minobu to visit him. The Daishonin mentions Ko Nyudo's visit to him at Minobu in a gosho entitled, Reply to Ko Nyudo. Dated April 1275. Since this present letter is dated June, one explanation holds that it may have been written in 1274, rather than 1275. On November 1, 1271, Nichiren Daishonin was taken to Sukahara, his initial place of exile on Sado Island. His quarters were a ruined shrine called Samai Du in the middle of a graveyard. It was exposed to the winds, and snow fell through the gaping holes in the roof. The Daishonin stayed there for nearly half a year, during which time he wrote, The Opening of the Eyes, and other important works. Then he was transferred to the residence of Ichinosawa Nyudo at Ichinosawa. While on Sado, he won many converts, inscribed the Gohanzen for individual believers and wrote a number of important letters and treatises. On March 8, 1274, a government official arrived at Sado Island with a pardon, and the Daishonin returned to Kamakura on March 26. After his third remonstration with the government, he retired to Minobu, where he devoted himself to ensuring the correct transmission of his teachings to posterity. Entrusted with gifts of a summer robe from his wife and 300 man of coins from Senichiyama, Ko Nyudo traveled the great distance to visit the Daishonin at Minobu. In this letter, the Daishonin expresses his appreciation for these donations, and explains the great benefit of making offerings to the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law, quoting a passage from the Hasi, 10th chapter of the Sutra. Then he describes the hardships that he underwent, especially on Sado, for the sake of true Buddhism, and expresses his gratitude to Ko no Ama and Ko Nyudo, who protected him even at the risk of their lives. 